Now this next little plugin is about something you requested, uh, the, the ability for your clients to be able to pay their invoices online and also be able to make like a partial payment. And so uh, that's what, the, what we'll talk about in this one. The name of the plugin is WP Invoices and uh, I use it, I think it's a very good plugin. And so I'm going to give you a little tutorial on how to use this plugin. Okay, so whenever you're ready to create an invoice for one of your clients, under inv you would log into your dashboard and under invoice you would click add new okay now we'll go ahead and make one for me max at a1websitepro.com and uh, you'll see that I've already been entered in here before so we could just go ahead and click my name and then you could cr create new now <clears throat> here is all the ingredients that are going to go into this invoice and you'll notice that this has been pre-filled out because my user information is already in here okay there's also a couple other people that are in here as well so we will go ahead and give this invoice a title maybe attorney services okay and maybe we'll put that as well also in the uh, content and here you have the, the editor just like you're used to with the pages and the posts and uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll enter uh, the first item uh, attorney services and maybe uh, say um, give it a little description uh, this is for attorney services and maybe the quantity, maybe you're charging by the hour, maybe you spent 10 hours at uh, $250 an hour, and you'll see that it'll total you up right over here automatically. Uh, maybe you had some uh, travel expenses going to see the uh, client, and maybe you were charging, uh, maybe it was 25 miles, maybe you were charging $2 a mile, and so you need to have your uh, total down here. Now you want to give the uh, the client the ability to allow a partial payment, so you would click this box right here, and maybe the minimum payment that you will accept is three hundred dollars. So they can put something like five dollars in there. So we'll go ahead and click save. And uh, as we scroll down through here, we can uh, we also see that we can add a discount and maybe it's a good customer discount so we'll go ahead and put a good customer discount can't talk and type at the same time and maybe one one want to give this a percentage discount maybe um, I don't know 10 percent or whatever and we can see that uh, that it goes on there we can see we have our sales tax that'll be in the settings but uh, under payment settings you can uh, use Google Wallet, PayPal or a credit card and you guys mentioned that you had authorized.net and if you want to give the ability for the the client to change the payment option to use another payment option you would click that and then you would give him the option of use other payment methods but right now we're just gonna leave it uh, well you know what? we'll go ahead and select all of them so you can see the difference whenever we get to the end of the uh, um, process here and so uh, we're going to go ahead and click save. Now from this you can see that the invoice status history was created at 10.57 p.m. on February 22nd and then it was updated at 10.59 p.m. Now that's not the time I'll go ahead and adjust your uh, UTF code. Uh, this is the, the time where the server's at or uh, the, it has the wrong F UTF code but it's a, it's a simple adjustment. Um, <clears throat> now let's say that this client mailed in a check and so uh, you want to enter you want to give them credit so you would enter a payment here by clicking this and then put the date and time the event note um, the other thing that you can do is you can view how this invoice will look online I hit my control button on my keyboard and I clicked view online and I'll go ahead and check this out and this is the way it's going to look like on the website when they're logged in checking this out and then as they scroll down you can see that the payment method is a credit card PayPal or Google Wallet and they'll scroll down and they'll put in their credit card number their expiration date uh, uh, 
month and year, and the card code, and then they would process that payment method using your API for Authorize.net. Uh, if it was uh, PayPal, if you're interested in making a, a PayPal business account, you could do that as well. And this is the information that they would need. And Google Wallet's pretty much uh, a little similar to the PayPal checkout process. Now, um, the minimum payment due is three hundred dollars, as we specified. But if they wanted to pay three hundred and fifty dollars, they can just enter that there. So, and we'll uh, work with this bullet stuff and get that out of there so it's not so confusing for the clients. And then they would you would just click process payment. The the client would click process payment. Now they would have to be logged in for them to do that. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. So. Right now, we're going to go ahead and send a notification, and that notification is going to come to my email here in just a minute. And uh, what we'll do is go ahead and view all invoices. And we see here that there's two invoices because I had created one earlier. There's the invoice ID number, and everything at a glance. If you want to look at reports, you can look at reports here, and this tells you. Uh, how many how much invoices is unpaid um, let's go ahead and go over the settings real quick okay so this is the main real estate law in New York then it has your address the business phone uh, you, this would be your email address on your website of course uh, we're gonna load the default CSS styles on the front end or we if we uncheck this we could use their uh, default uh, CSS styles now you could calculate uh, taxable subtotal after discount or before the discount. You can use global tax. I put the global tax at six percent, and that's why you had s seen the uh, tax uh, automatically generated when you generated the invoice. And you can allow partial payments. You can have uh, reoccurring payments, and this uh, is important. Enforce HTTPS on invoice pages, especially whenever uh, you're using Authorize.net or something like that, or that kind of API, because you want a secure server for your client's protection. Um, we're not using GoDaddy hosting. Um, you could have a custom template, but we're not worried about that right now either. Business process automatically increment increment the invoice uh, custom ID by one. That means that your invoice numbers will be going one, two, three, four, five, six as the invoices are created. So when viewing an invoice, uh, display invoices on the pay invoice page and that would be right here. The pay invoice page and you can see that if you look at the URL pay invoice. Now a person is going to have to be logged into the, the website on their account in order to see this so they can pay their bill. So that's just the only applicable way to do that. Um, you could go over uh, this uh, uh, information, but I have everything pretty much set the way you want. And if you want to track things with Google Analytics, I could set you up a Google Analytics account. In fact, I am. And we could go ahead and track the uh, events, see how many people uh, are attempting to pay invoices and how many are viewing their invoices. So that's a little good piece of information for you as well. Uh, this is your payment module. Uh, of course, I have enabled all of them, Google Wallet, PayPal, and Merchant, just so that you can see what the difference is. Um, and then you can enter your manual payment information here, like if you're paying by a check, you want to mail in a check, you can do that as well. Um, here's your email templates. Uh, whenever you send out a new invoice, this is what the, the, the client will receive. They'll receive, of course, their name, um, the business name, and then the description of whatever you put in there. And uh, let's say that uh, you need to send a reminder. Well, this is the template for it. And then, of course, receipts will be sent automatically after they pay their invoices. Um, you have your different line items. Uh, we have web design services, web development services. I was fooling around in there. Uh, just adding a couple, but you could add, add your own so that they're already in there. Uh, we also have premium features with this uh, plugin, and if you want to, your clients to be able to print out PDFs, you can purchase this feature, uh, Power Tools and Quotes and so on and so forth. And if you ever need any help, of course you could call me or you could uh, check out these people's website. Okay, now let's go on and send an email reminder. And uh, 
So we're gonna, we'll go ahead and click this for attorney services. Uh, this guy owes two thousand some odd dollars, and so what we'll do is click send it notification, and we see we're sending it to Max at A1 Website Pro, and we're going to use the new invoice template. And you see that everything here is automatically generated. If you need wanted to add anything, you can put it in there. We'll go ahead and click send notification, and we can see here that the notification was sent at uh, 11.28 p.m. February 22nd, 2013. So we'll click Save and we'll go on and see what that email looks like. Okay, so this is the email that we got, uh, billing, uh, new invoice, attorney services. And we see here that there's a special URL with a special code there. And so your client would receive this email. Real Estate Law has sent you a recurring invoice in the amount of $2,432. And so he would click that link and it would take him directly to his page where he can pay that invoice and or he could pay the minimum amount due or of course enter another um, amount and then he could use select his method of pay if you're interested in that later and then he would enter his card number the month expiration expiration year and then of course process the payment and that's how that would work and then it would be updated in your um, in your uh, dashboard there that this person had paid and so we'll see what that looks like next say so, okay so uh, we'll log back into our dashboard here and under invoices we'll go view all and as we scroll down here we can see that three hundred fifty dollars was paid of two thousand four hundred thirty for Maximus McCullough and it's that simple so I hope this tutorial had been good for you to familiarize you with uh, the invoices. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call.